Hello there my very good friends, on today's wrestling news more WWE releases could be coming this week with major names potentially involved. An update on those AEW releases. There was a major return on last night's NXT baby, that was, that was very subtle wasn't it? <laughs> and I've got the updated NXT TakeOver In Your House card. I'm Adam Wilborn. And I'm Andy Murray. And this is the news. All right, we're going to kick things off with a report from Fightful Select uh, issued last night stating that WWE's cost cutting may not be over and may come, well, there might be more releases potentially as soon as this week is the core of all of this, uh, with major names in WWE potentially on what is described here as an ongoing list of potential cuts. Although it is also noted here that, of course, WWE has recently changed their mind at the very last minute on certain names that have been involved in these lists and everything else. So, uh, yeah, this is what Fightful has come to after consulting with sources within WWE. Potentially, we could be sitting here reporting on more people losing their jobs in WWE later this week. Week. Now, cost-cutting has been cited as a reason for the majority of WWE departures this year. In April, of course, we had people like Samoa Joe, the Iconics, Mickey James, Tucker, all leaving the company, all let go. Uh, then last month, of course, we had the NXT releases, we had Drake Wirtz, a bunch of other people, Vanessa Bourne, some other folks as well. And then the following day, we got Velveteen Dream, who was not cited uh, as a budgetary-related cut. There's all kinds of things going on in the company. They've let go of loads of wrestlers this year, haven't they? We've also seen people like Steve Cutler uh, let go. Andrade asked for his release. He's gone as well. So, uh, you know, the budget cut reason is why, primarily, WWE gets so much stick for this because, of course, they are sitting on a massive pile of money. Uh, record profits in 2020, uh, as announced in February when the year-end reports were released. They got billion-dollar content rights fees coming out of their ears uh, all over the place. So, you know, it's it's a tough situation. We'll obviously come back and update you when people are let go and, you know, when the names are made public and everything else. Um, sucks to learn about people losing their jobs in 2021, but here we are. I think we say this every time we, we talk about one of these stories, saying that, hey, this probably won't be the last time uh, we have to cover such a thing. So here's hoping that this time it is actually the last time, because I don't like talking about people losing their jobs, man. It really sucks. Yeah, no, exactly as you said, Andy. I mean, we, we say this every single time. These are unnecessary in terms of justifying it as part of a budget cut. And I had really hoped that as much as we didn't enjoy reporting on the April and the May releases, that would have been it. And then you wake up to this news today and your heart sinks and you can't help but, but speculate as to who it's going to be. We're obviously not going to say any names here. That would no, be no. unprofessional. But yeah, I realise, you know, things are looking better in terms of they're not releasing wrestlers necessarily in the midst of a global pandemic but it's still not exactly the greatest environment to release wrestlers back out into and as you keep saying every single time i report this andy this is all completely unnecessary yeah absolutely it's uh, the budget cut reason is like come on guys <laughs> come on guys yeah. it's a reality of the world obviously we're living in uh you know these mega rich companies they don't care uh, about your day-to-day -day struggle to make a living and everything else it's the bottom line and um, so you know we're not naive to that but it's still quite a cruel thing uh best wishes obviously to everyone who's been released so far apart from velveteen dream screw that guy uh and hope they all find suitable employment going forward and i hope that the same happens for people who might be let go later this week as well yeah and as andy said we will keep you updated as and when that awful news breaks but uh, wwe aren't the only ones doing releases at the moment AEW, uh, you may have heard uh, rumors of this over the weekend the room is getting louder and louder at the start of this week awesome kong and shanna uh, being released by aew they were both sort of removed from the aew official roster page over the weekend dave Meltzer has subsequently reported that the wrestlers contracts uh, with the promotion simply have not been renewed and fightful select gave us another report on top of that with more details about the situation uh, regarding kong they decided to split that whole nightmare collective in early 2020 uh, off the back of the legend the impact wrestling legend kong uh, being 
unable to compete or not being cleared to compete, as I should say. Uh, and that was a sort of a foreseeable route to her being cut because she hadn't been working in the coaching role she'd originally been earmarked for. In terms of Shanna, uh, AEW talent had been speaking with Fightful Select saying that the Portuguese wrestler had issues with other wrestlers and specifically extras who didn't like how Shanna was treating them. Uh, as again, we never like to see wrestlers being released, Andy, but both of these are, are certainly not surprising to me. Yeah, I mean, this is an entirely different situation, isn't it, to letting people go for budgetary reasons. Uh, yeah, Kong hadn't wrestled since January 2020. Um, it seems to me, and this is purely me, just speculatively, I, I feel like she might be done with pro wrestling. Yeah. And um, she wasn't massively active before she came into AEW, but she got to come in. Uh, the Double or Nothing surprise was really cool and really yeah. good fun. Um, she had a little run. I know the Nightmare Collective was kind of widely criticized by ourselves included, um, but it was nice to let her have that surprise at the very least. Uh, she's obviously doing a bunch of acting and stuff now, as well so i think she probably has eyes on other things and is maybe just done yeah. with the sport completely she's a legend and it's a shame um but that's the reality of her situation with shanna it's like look if you've got issues with other wrestlers that's a very difficult situation and uh, we saw it with Eva Lise when she was let go uh shanna of course had the co the controversy social media stuff uh, in november as well not a great look for her at all uh, prior to her comeback after spending some time off at the start of the ongoing global health crisis. Um, not renewed, not a huge surprise with any no. of these. Um, yeah, man, it, it, these situations, all of them are different. There's different nuances and layers to everything. Drake Wirtz in WWE is another example of a guy who maybe had differences that contributed to yeah. him getting let go as well. It's what it is, man. Different situations, different companies, different reasons. Everything's different. Exactly, um, yeah. Adam Cole, he's back on NXT. Stuff, yep. He returned on last night's show. He hasn't been on TV since, like, the end of April. Uh, of course, he lost Kyle O'Reilly uh, at uh, TakeOver Stand and Deliver. Lost their feud-ending match. Had an interview a couple of weeks later. No sign of him since then until he showed up last night. He ruined that oh. Mother Hubbard, a number one contenders match at the start of the show between Johnny Gargano, Pete Dunne, and Kyle O'Reilly. Beat everyone up, unable to continue, no contest, no contender for carrying cross, or so it seemed. Adam Cole came out again later in the show and said, hey, give me a title shot, NXT. Carrying uh, cross came out, there was a bit of verbal back and forth. William Regal, he appeared and he said, listen, Adam Cole, I know what you're doing and it's not gonna work. But then Mr. Cross, he said, Give me all of these guys <laughs> at TakeOver. Give me every single one of them. So now at TakeOver, we're getting that fatal five-way. Uh, Karrion Cross, NXT Champion, Adam Cole, Kyle O'Reilly, Johnny Gargano, Pete Dunne. This is every big name in that main event scene, isn't it? In one match together, I'm sure they'll work something enjoyable. But uh, yeah, nice to see Adam Cole back on TV. He's uh, obviously great and uh, I enjoy having him on my screen. So there you go. <laughs> yeah, fantastic seeing back in NXT last night. His gorgeous face back on the telly. Uh, like you say, just ruining the entire triple threat that they had. Uh, destroying everyone. Daddy Regal runs out. He can't control <laughs> his own bloody show. Chaos Ember Moon ran out after that and called out Racco. Got this bonkers to start to NXT last night. Uh, we'll, of course, be upping and downing it later on today on the channel. And, uh, yeah... I, I have to say, I didn't see this one coming. Me and the Dudleys were sat there going, OK, so it's going to be, obviously, Karrion Cross versus Johnny Gargano. He's sort of going to lose upwards uh, and pull a great match out of Karrion Cross at TakeOver. And then they said, who do you want to face at TakeOver, Mr. Cross? And he said, yes. So he's going to face everyone. Bonkers. Fatal five-way. I've no idea what's going to happen, but it is certainly piqued my interest a lot more, I have to say, this decision, uh, because far more likely, they bang on about it all the time, WWE and in AEW, about the champion not needing to be pinned in a mm -hmm. you know, multi-man match for the title. Karen Cross, Adam Cole, Pete Dunne, Kyle O'Reilly, Johnny Gargano, who leaves with the NXT Championship? What's Karen Cross going to do to everyone? He's going to hoi him left and right, and how's he going to respond to Adam Cole calling him, I believe, Mr. Overrated? Oh, he's a brave man. Uh, but that isn't the only match on NXT TakeOver in your house. Uh, major additions to the show last night. Uh, we got the NXT Women's Championship match confirmed. It is going to be Raquel Gonzalez against Ember Moon, as I alluded to earlier on. Uh, we've got Zia Lee with her spooky dragon lady and Boa with her. 
Uh, targeting Mercedes Martinez, who accepted Zaylee's challenge. There was a nice bit of history about those two together. And it is going to be LA Knight at time of recording with Ted DiBiase in his corner, although he was shaking his head after Cameron Grimes kind of distracted him. And Jake Atlas got the win over LA Knight on NXT last night. And he's going to be taking on LA Knight, that is. It's Cameron Grimes, baby, to the moon. Please let him have a friendship with <laughs> I just want that to happen, Andy. Looks like a great card coming up next weekend. Yeah, it should be a fun show. Takeover has quite a, quite a high floor uh, when it comes to the quality of these things. I'm sure it'll be a right good time. And I'm all right in thinking Todd Pettengill's back as well. He is. Get in! Right, let's move on to your Twitter <laughs> questions. At what culture WWE, of course, we want to get in touch with us. Uh, first question today comes from Jonathan F, who says, Hello there. Hello, Jonathan. Uh, what do you think of a slow burn of a Baker Rosa feud over the next few months to the next pay per view with a double turn happening at the end? Rosa <laughs> wins in heelish ways. Baker is a huge babyface after, and then she maybe takes it back at full gear. What do you reckon, Andy? Yeah, I do think that um, Baker and Thunder Rosa will be the next feud. Uh, Thunder Rosa cut a promo on Dark Elevation, kind of signalling that. Um, she, it's an interesting situation, right? Because she beats Britt Baker in the unsanctioned Lights Out match, but it's an unsanctioned match. It doesn't count towards towards records and stuff. So Britt's going to go, no, that doesn't count. Get back in the line, you. Uh, and Thunder Rosa's going to be like, no, 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 I pinned you. I uh, beat you up. Uh, so so there's lots of interesting ground to cover there. I do think it can last until the next pay-per-view. If mm -hmm. I had the pencil, if I was the Booker Man, I would be looking to put that together. As far as the double turn goes, I don't think that's the right route to take. I think the Brit should have a long reign on top as a heel champion. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I know that she got the incredible crowd reaction at Double or Nothing and everything else, but uh, it just feels too early, man, to get rid of this, this sick heel character. It's one of the mm. best personalities in all of wrestling uh, at the moment, and I don't see any need to change that for now. Also, Thunder Rosa is like a tremendous fiery baby face as yeah. well. For me, it's the perfect cocktail. Don't need the double turn, but the match in the feud will be awesome. Yeah, I think I think Brick Baker is is very much the sort of female MJF MJF in that respect in terms of the fact that fans adore them, but they know that if they're doing heel things, we have to boo them. It's a bit like Roman Reigns, I suppose, in WWE in terms of like, wow, this is great, but I need to boo because this is a thing that we boo. But I will still appreciate how talented a wrestler they are. I'm excited. I'm, it's, it's a shame, obviously, Sheeda had to lose the title, but there's just so many mouth-watering encounters open up to us now with Britt Baker as the new AW Women's Champion. And yeah, Thunder Rosa is right at the top of that list. Uh, second question today comes from Roger Petrov. He says, morning, gents. Morning, Roger. The Max Caster rap might be my favourite thing in all of AEW at the moment. Yeah, mine too. Uh, is it fair to say that he has something completely different than what Cena had? Yeah, Max Caster... This, this guy rules every single time. Every single time he appears, whether it's on Dark, Elevation, Dynamite, or on Pay Per View, as we saw on Sunday, you gotta watch it, man. You gotta watch it. He since he stopped giving a damn and started uncorking lines about like Lady Gaga's dog walker and stuff, it's like, gee whiz, he's really taken off, and he got a big crowd reaction at the Pay Per View uh, on Sunday as well. Um, as far as Cena goes, obviously, you know, rapping gimmicks, uh, dropping mm -hmm. disses and everything else, there's always going to be parallels there. But I think, like, Caster's humour is a bit... Dr I'm not going to say either one is better or worse than the other, right? Because, you know, that's I don't want to do that. Um, but Caster has a much drier sense of humour about him, I think, than Cena does. Cena mm -hmm. was pretty much just a strict go for the throat kind of guy. He was great <laughs> at it. The Doctor of Fugonomics absolutely ruled. But Caster will go, Dustin, look at me. Look at me, Dustin. And things like that. Uh, he was on Dark the other week and he was like, hey, Cole Cabana, I tried to listen to your podcast. Just, uh, it just sucked. Uh, there's little lines <laughs> that he throws in there kind of out of the rap itself that really make the act. And yeah. uh, I think that that's what separates the two. And I think that Max and his partner Anthony Bowens and the Acclaimed are doing a great job. Yeah, I've got a feeling they're going to have to turn babyface soon because that is, it got a yeah. great reaction at Double or Nothing. Uh, and I'm not suggesting that, you know, we influence Max, Cast Max Caster. But we did used to do rhymes on the news and he probably watched that and thought, yeah, I'll nick that. <laughs> uh, right, final question of the day comes from Georgina Dore, who says, do you think that a five-way match, I'm glad you're sitting down for this, Andy. Do you think that a five-way match between Brian Cage, Christian Cage, <laughs> Ethan Page, Adam Page and special guest Nick Gage could work as the <laughs> battle of the ages? All ages, battle royal. Uh <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I think that this match would give uh, Vince McMahon a hernia. Uh, too many similar sounding syllables oh. in there. Uh, like, what other ages, cages, pages, and gauges can we get? Got to get DDP Royal? in there. Let us know. Yeah, DDP, throw him in there. Diamond Dallas Page. Uh, Page, of course, from yes. WWE. Get her in there. Uh, don't don't hurt your neck, obviously, Page. Mm -hmm. uh, throw some names down there in the comment section below. I've got to say, I love Page, but I'd be less concerned about her, about her hurting her neck and more concerned with just Nick Gage being there, if I'm perfectly yeah. honest, after watching that dark side of the ring. Sweet Jesus. Uh, right, let's move on to today's and finally... And very exciting news breaking overnight. Renee Paquette tweeting, All right, guys, big ask here. My darling husband, John Moxley, is going to be guest hosting an episode of Oral Sessions while I, while I figure out this whole mom thing. Let's ask him for relationship life advice to answer on the show. Use the hashtag at AskMox. Oh, I'm so excited for this, Andy, because yes. a, a, a couple goals, Renee and, and Mox, isn't it? And uh, Yeah. Oh my god, I can't wait for him to do have to do like a... Before we go any further though, let's give a shout out to our sponsors today. <laughs> that is gonna be a that's gonna be a rougher transition than when Jericho has to go. <laughs> well, great point there, Andy, and we'll talk more about that in a second, but I want to talk about Omaha Stakes. <laughs> yeah. Can't wait for this. Uh, anytime John Moxley does audio, it's a must listen. So I'm sure this will be great. Genuinely one of the best podcasts out there that isn't ours. What Culture Wrestling, wherever you get your podcasts from. Let us know your thoughts on that and all today's news stories in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and subscribe, as I said, to What Culture Wrestling, wherever you get your podcasts from. Myself and the Dudley Boys reviewing NXT later on today. But also let us know your thoughts and Twitter questions on Twitter at What Culture WWE. How much are you there? Follow both of us. You can follow Andy Murray at... At Andy H. Murray. And it's a happy birthday for the H today. Uh, congratulations to today's member of the birthday community... AJ Styles. Oh. He's never gonna live never gonna live that old comment down, is he? No. <laughs> he definitely isn't. Not in my no world. Wonder. Happy birthday, AJ Styles. And I'm gonna use the H <laughs> for the happy vaccination day to one Andy Murray. Hope you enjoy having only one working arm. Follow me on Twitter at Adam Wilborn. Follow us all at What Culture WWE. But for now, my thanks to Andy Murray. Thank you for joining us. And we will see you soon.